Hi folks, Mr. Vass here. Um, put together a couple short videos on the TI Inspire CAS calculator. Uh, this is the calculator we predominantly use in AP Calculus. Uh, we also, uh, many of you use my calculators from my class set, which are also TI Inspire CAS. Many of the things I show you will be specific to the CAS calculator, but many of the features will also work with the TI Inspire CX non-CAS calculator. Uh, first of all, what does CAS stand for? It stands for Computer Algebra System. So the, the TI Inspire is set up with uh, both a document menu and a scratch pad menu. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a little bit of detail about the difference between the two. Um, my standard canned response is that you should always be working in a document. However, I'll spend much of my time working in Scratchpad 2. Uh, the trade-off between these two is that there are more features and analysis available in a document than there is in a Scratchpad. Scratchpad is designed for you to do your basic calculations, such as, hey, you want to know what 2 times 2 is, you do it on the scratch pad. Uh, additionally, the scratch pad has a graphing feature. You can get to it from this home screen. If you want to graph yourself the parent graph of the parabolas, there it is. You can also toggle back and forth between the calculator and the scratch pad from these tabs at the top of the screen. So that's a quick overview of the scratch pad. Now let's talk about the document menu. Once you, add, once you start a new document, you're given the option to add these different apps. Most of the time we'll spend is either in calculator or graphs. You can also add one of those apps by clicking these buttons down here. Calculator, graph, geometry, spreadsheet, data and statistics, notes, and then some science thing I've never used before. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a calculator page. From here, you can do your basic calculations. Notice how I just did 7 divided by 8 and I got a fraction 7 divided by 8. A lot of students are bothered by that and they're like, hey, I want the decimal version of that. Well, there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, you can do 7 divided by 8 and then select the approximately equal to, which is the blue button, the blue uh, key right above the enter. So control enter gives me the decimal equivalent. You can also force an answer from exact to approximate by inserting a decimal point anywhere in your calculation. So again, exact answer versus approximate answer. To get an approximate answer, all you need to do is force a decimal point into your problem anywhere it makes sense. You can even do something like this, 7 divided by 8 times, 1 point and it'll give you your approximate answer. Uh, one other quick thing I want to talk about in this video before I, um, before I move on to another one is I want to talk about common settings. So if you go to the home screen and select settings, document settings, uh, these are the settings that I traditionally use. Uh, display digits is set to float. Uh, it'll show you as many decimals as it can on the screen. Angle, I choose radian as opposed to degrees, and uh, the reason why is because if I ever need to do a calculation in degrees, I can force the calculator to degrees by using the degree symbol. Uh, the other uh, setting here that I think uh, is important is the calculation mode. I have it set to auto. That means it's going to automatically give me an exact answer if appropriate or an approximate answer if appropriate. And like I mentioned before, if it's set to auto, but you want to force it to approximate, you can just put a decimal point anywhere in your problem. Okay, uh, one last thing I want to show you here, and that is regarding the uh, setting for radians. You'll notice up here in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, uh, the letters RAD. That tells me what angle mode I'm in. If that says degree, you're in degree mode. Depending on what course you're in, you may need to flip flat flip back and forth between those, but I prefer to stay in radians and only use degrees when I have to. For example, what if I want the sine uh, ratio for 30? Uh, well, the sine of 30 is just sine of 30 because it says sine of 30 in radians is something I can't really, uh, I can't simplify. 
If I do 30 decimal, again, this is 30 radians. The sine of 30 radians is negative 0 0.988. But what if I want the sine of 30 degrees? Well, the sine of 30 degrees, even though I'm in radians, I can use the degree symbol, which is located right in that pi symbol menu, 30 degrees, has a sine ratio of 1 half. That's all I have for this video. I uh, look forward to other videos to help you learn some more of the powerful features of the TI Inspire CAS calculator.